Hi, welcome back with me. I'm going to finish up. I see so my sticky, you can see my sticky notes up here. <laughs> anyway, got my sticky notes, people I pray for. I got people I pray for over here. And this is life. This is how we live. Meet people that pray a lot and have people we pray. We we have no, I leave, I'm a note person. I've got families. I got my family over here, pictures and and um and and uh, uh got uh, my new church getting ready to be built we got some stuff up here to pray so anyway welcome to my little corner of the of the of odessa today and i want to talk to you we're going to talk about um ezekiel 46 and 47 i'm sorry 46 uh, and 47 today and i wanted to talk to you about this today and what we're we're going to talk about is about the offerings that were brought to the house now in in the old testament um there was a requirement for the feast days and the sabbath that they were to bring offerings but in um in 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 ezekiel's uh in this chapter here in ezekiel he is talking about in in verse um chapter tw uh, verse 12 of 46 about the the voluntary burnt offerings of peace offerings and voluntarily giving offerings to the lord and i believe that's who we are and that's where we are today that you should there should be a point that you shouldn't be told that you need to bring offerings to the lord that you need to offer a sacrifice uh certainly a sacrifices of praise that we should always be continually in our mouth is what the Lord says, but you should be make it a habit of sacrificing and bringing things to the Lord. And, and, you know, people, you know, they, they, they want to give, uh, of, of, about things that are above, but those that love the Lord know that it is not enough to just give when they're told to give because the, the church demands you to give, but you have a heart of giving voluntarily giving of not only your, your, your ties, but ties of all. That's what pastor Kevin and I have been doing for years. We give them the first of everything. We're not, we want them included and we want them part of everything in our lives. And so God's not requiring that. God didn't tell us that. That was something we got a hold of about Abraham as we were reading in Genesis that, that Abraham gave the tithes of all. And so we incorporated that into our lives many years ago that we want to give him tithes of all. We want him to be included in any new thing that we do, anything that we're starting. We want to bring an offering. We want to get him involved in that and him to be a part of it. He is the first part, the first part of our day we give to the Lord. We acknowledge him, spend time with him in the word. I, I mean, it's going to be quiet, but now when I go on, everybody's going to start texting me. So anyway, um, um, the, so it, it's, it's a voluntary thing. This is what we want to do because we love Jesus. And that's where you should get to in your life that you're not going to, you're not drudgingly taking the tithe. You're are excited about bringing the tithes to the house of the Lord because you know and you have through personal experience that you have uh, that he has rebuked the devourer that he has opened to you the windows of heaven and he has poured you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive now we have seen the results we have seen God do what he promised us in Malachi 3 that that if we bring the tithes to the storehouse that we would that we can prove him and he will do those things. And so, and he will do them if you bring them, you, and you watch for it, you wait for it, you expect it. So there is, should be an expectation. You, when you tithe, you just don't tithe out of love, uh, out of, not we tithe out of love, but we don't tithe out of law. We tithe because we want to, we tithe because we get to, amen. And I'm, again, I'm not trying to get out of my covenant with the Lord. When I see something in the Lord, in the word that uh, that boy I'm not applying boy I I'm not I'm not saying oh I've got to apply this no I know that these are exceeding great and precious promises that if I when I do them that I can be partakers of the divine nature that he wants when I apply a biblical principle or something I see in the word I find that God adds to he increases amen he's not about taking things he's about making an exchange and I appreciate Appreciate that God is the God of great exchange. What happened with Jesus, that big exchange that we made 
Our part was to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and paid the price for our sins. The exchange that we had to make was confession and belief in our heart upon Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and what he had done for us. God's part was to accept that. God set the terms. God set the terms. We didn't. But if we don't do that, then we don't get the benefits. And so there's always an exchange with God. You can't see how confession and belief in your heart can exchange be exchanged for salvation and deliverance. But it's true because Romans 10, not in 10, talks about it. And that's what it says in the Bible. So you want to know the plan of salvation. They call that the Romans road. And so you can look in Romans 10, 9 and 10. And it talks about the way you get to salvation. So any one of you have Romans 10, 9 and 10 in your Bible. And you can open that and you can lead someone to the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's not hard. Amen. It's not, um, it's not hard. It's, he's made it, <coughs> Jesus made it easy. It's God made it easy for everyone, no matter, he's not a respecter, no matter what your capacity is to be able to understand. He made it so easy that if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart upon Jesus, you shall be saved. And so, but these, these offerings that I'm talking about, this is not about salvation. This is about a love relationship that you have with the Lord, that you want to give him something. You always are want, I'm always wanting to give him, wanting to know what can I give? What can I do to please the Lord? What could, what would you like for me to do for you today? I want to please you. I want to be a part of, of, of what you're doing. And so he will speak to me about certain offerings. These are not offerings that some pastor's telling me that I have to offer. These are in my relationship with the Lord. He wants me to offer up. I don't want you to eat today. I want you to just set aside. I don't want you to go out today. I want you to set aside and wait here and be with me and fellowship around the word today. Uh, and that's an offering. And people don't see it as an offering, but it is a, 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 um, what, what was I saying? It, it's a voluntary offer. It, I, it's not by law. It is because of relationship, because I want to know him. And if you are voluntarily giving offerings to the Lord of your time, of, of, of say, giving things uh, that you have to other people, um, blessing people in a line at a grocery store or at the gas station or, or being a, available to volunteer Voluntarily, in the name of Jesus, give an offering. Sometimes, a lot of times, you won't ever see the people again, but God sees a heart. There is a heart to voluntarily offer yourself as a burnt offering to the Lord, to voluntarily offer uh, works, offer things to the Lord. These are not things that you that you're, that you have to by law do, because in the New Testament, we have a better covenant that has been established on better promises. Amen. Uh, this is a better covenant. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a covenant of love. Amen. It's a covenant of a God, of the love of God dwelling on you and you having a love relationship with Jesus. And it's just like with pastor Kevin, we've been married for 30 years and I want to know how I can please him. Now, I mean, he's, he's not a gift guy. He's not, he doesn't care about gifts. Thank you, Jesus. But, but so, so he doesn't, so when he, it comes around, his birthday, I have to say, Lord, help me to find find something that I can bless this man naturally because I, I bless him as much as I can. I speak over him and praise him. I, you know, I minister to him, but what could I do that just would do something for him? So, you know, this, this birthday just passed for him. And so I was able to do a couple things, fix this bike, you know, got his bike fixed because he we like to ride the bike. And, um, you know, and then, um, I, I got this little outdoor shower shower made for him because he likes taking showers outside. So, I mean, I had to, but I had to find, I had to say, Lord, what can I do? Help me to do something to please him. But it's the same with Jesus. I want to do voluntarily something. What 
can I bring once the offering, the first offering, the best offering is yourself, amen, because um, he is jealous for you, and he will have no other gods before him. He wants to be number one. So if you haven't made a decision that he is going, that you're going to seek him and put him first, today's a good day to do that. And it's just determined, and it's so simple, just I'm going to, I am going to make it, put a note somewhere. I'm just going to wake up. I, I have a sign that a friend of mine gave me a few years ago. There's a song that says, give me Jesus in the morning. When I rise, give me Jesus. And I like, I uh, really like that song. And, and, um, and so she gave me a plaque and I, when I wake up in the morning, I have, I see the plaque right in front of me in the morning. When I rise, give me Jesus. You know, he is there every morning and I acknowledge him, but I just love that song. And, and so every morning, just acknowledge him. The Bible says in Romans that in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. But if you don't acknowledge him, he doesn't have to direct your path. We know the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord and he delights in them. But I encourage you, acknowledge him in the beginning of the day. When you start a new business, give him the first fruits. Like I said, we give him tithes of all. We've been doing this a long time. This isn't about a duty. This is about a love relation. This is about we want to invite Jesus. We want to invite the Father into anything that we're involved in. Amen. And so I encourage you over the offerings. Um, there's different offerings. There are peace offerings. I believe for us, there's trespass offerings, and I'm not, it's not my intent today to go through this a study on the offerings. We're just basing this right now from chapter 46 of uh, Ezekiel. But the peace offering and the trespass offerings um, that God will, has used us in in, in seasons that to um, sow a seed in an area where somebody was offended by us and we realized they were offended with us, God has had us sow a seed to them. Uh, um, we didn't feel that we trespassed, but they were offended and that seed that we sowed to them somehow... Um, close that gap, that trespass, uh, a trespass offering. There have been times that we have sowed seeds uh, to... Uh, because we have felt like maybe we offended somebody and we, by the spirit, we needed to sow a seed to them. And again, some of these seeds are not tangible seeds. There's some calling them. How can I help you? What can I do? Can I give you something there? There's different things because you will never be a sower will never be without seed because God has promised that he will minister seed to the sower. But you want to be expecting. This is not about a tithe. This is about being open and hearing because you God is about the future and he is going to give you opportunities for, to get seed in the ground and make offerings so that you're in the right position and in the right situation there are peace offerings that make peace there are peace uh, uh, offerings that they talk about in the Old Testament of peace sometimes the offerings that you are giving might be to a person to restore some kind of peace in a in the situation. It might be that you give to a ministry for enlargement of their ministry. Uh, uh, the Lord spoke to me to, to, re, uh, to restore, uh, to, to restore a, a, an offering that was given to me about 10 years ago. And he said, I want you to, I don't want you just to give that. I want you to give some more with it. Hallelujah. And this is not something that he's requiring. This is, this is, will you, do, I want to do something for you here. I want to do something for this new season. And so I want you to get seed in certain places. I want you to, I want you to give some offerings. And I'm so grateful that I have some offerings to give, that I have some finances that I can apply, that I can get back into people that have already sown to us in previous times that I needed. That's why we have to be open. When God is prospering us, I appreciate we have some dear intercessors in, um, up in Georgia 
and um and they when they they got some uh, money from the government and i i so appreciated this is the heart of this this woman and and why one of the reasons her ministry is so successful and and, and god is using her in such a powerful way but when she got that money for for um for her business what she did is she took for the next two years when this money was going to be allocated she gave every one of those employees that had been with her through the pandemic an increase in wage to match that and then she took the rest of those increase and she sewed to different ministries and now nobody told her she had to do that but that is what she had to do it was an unexpected supply that came to her but she didn't put it in her pocket she took it and she blessed the people that worked with her this was a voluntary offering that but God has blessed her God has given her prospered her business God has kept her and sustained her now they got that money because they were the only uh only um daycare facility in the city that stayed open during the pandemic the only place and so the government was looking to reward those people that stayed open because all of their most of the people that that worked there they were single parents they had to work to provide they were single moms that were take that had to take their kids somewhere so that they could provide for themselves and they stayed open some of those people couldn't pay them they are sowers of seed they are these are voluntary offerings that she was not required by law to do but it's a heart of gratitude and a heart of a, an attitude to give unto the Lord these offerings and minister and bless those people I tell you a God sees your heart in over finances and he will he does something for the sower that he doesn't do for the receiver because it is blessed you are more blessed to give than you are to receive so I'm always looking for what I can how can I offer something to the Lord. It might just be how can I help this person out of the car and into a situation I, I don't know them, but how can I give just be a blessing to somebody and not, I'm not sure to try to get them saved. I'm going to give them dare just to simply love people. Can we just love people and try and start it instead of trying to just knock off your ticker take of how much you think you have to get done so that you can say you want somebody else to the Lord. You know, people can say things, but that doesn't mean and believe they believed in their heart and accepted. But you follow the Holy Spirit when he says to go. I remember I was walking, I uh, was uh, walking out of the store. This is probably 20, 20 years ago. And I saw this man near the handicap area and he was having trouble getting out of his car. I didn't recognize him. I walked over to him and I said, can, sir, can I help you? You look like you're having, you know, a problem. Come to find it was somebody that I that we knew that was in that was in relationship with our my stepson. And and so I said, Oh, Mr. Manowitz, it's so good to see you. I I didn't know it was you, but um, it's so nice to see you. And I started, I just started to pray for him. I started to pray that the Lord would heal him. I tell you, the power of God came down in the object. In that parking lot, I tell you, the whole parking lot, I felt like the whole parking lot. Got set, got healed. Amen. And you know what happened is that was a seed. Many months later, a couple years later, when he was dying on his deathbed, the Holy Spirit got the, that he got God sent Pastor Kevin to give him the opportunity to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Before he passed on. You know what? We never know what seeds we're sowing today that won't, it might be that it's, it's a few years, but it was an offering of just help. Just being available to reach out and to help somebody. You never know the divine encounter that's going to come out of it, but he's looking for somebody to be available for an offering, for being a, a living sacrifice, which Romans 12 says that this is the reasonable, we forget this is the reasonable 
reasonable service that each of us have is to, to be a living sacrifice, amen, unto the Lord, that we would be our, let our minds be renewed. So I don't know what sacrifices or voluntary sacrifices you've made, or, or, but maybe, maybe you, you don't ever consider that these things are sacrifices, but God is receiving, he's looking over the offerings that you're giving him today in your life, in, in taking time to be with him. This is a, a sac, I tell you, I've been so blessed being with you and, and teaching and being here in the word with you. I tell you, I, I, it's been just a, it's just been, it's been a sailor. Every time I get to come uh, on with you, it's a, it's a pause. Let's think about this. I've got some bug that's decided that come in front of me in the name of Jesus. I think it's gone now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, you know, one of the names of the, the devil is Be Beelzebub. <laughs> so anyway, that bug's gone now in Jesus name. Let's go on here. I want to, so, so whatever your offerings are, you want to make sure that you are bringing things to, if it's your life, if it's time with him, if it's um, a, a tangible offering to someone in need, that you identify that you're giving this in the name of the Lord personally, that you're doing it out of the uh, out of a, a love relationship with Jesus. And so that was, um, I, I know I kind of took some liberty there in the offerings, but I, that's what I wanted to talk about from um, Ezekiel 46. And then let's go on here. And let's talk about Ezekiel 47. And I, as you, uh, I don't know that you can see this, but um, this is a book by Billy Brim. And Billy Brim is a woman of prayer. And this is, I've had this book. It's it's well-worn. It's another one of my well-worn books. And Billy Brim is a woman, seasoned woman of prayer. Um, uh, and she has her own prayer ministry um, in the Ozarks. And, and Ozarks? Prayer Mountain, it's called, and I think it's in the Ozarks. But anyway, I got a hold of this book 20-something years ago. And see, this was printed in 95, so a while ago. Anyway, um, this is the first copyright, but I got it probably in the 90s then, in uh, late 90s. And, uh, and this talks about the blood and the glory, and we're going to talk about the glory. And as we were praying on Monday, yesterday, we had, uh, I've been praying since 2000 and. 15, we started the prayer saturations, and um, every month is different. Every prayer saturation, the Holy Ghost leads. We have different people call in, and different flows of different people call in, and, and there's different levels of uh, We go into different levels of prayer. And so this week, in particular, though, uh, because we had a prayer saturation on Monday, yesterday, is that yesterday? <laughs> we had so much is going on. Anyway, yesterday morning from 5 to uh, mid midday um, um, to half a, about I'm not sure maybe 8 30 or 9 all of a sudden uh, I was praying with one of the women and I think there was somebody else on because I never know some people are on and they'll never let me know they're on um, I can sometimes get a recap of it but anyway this day um, the glory of the glory of God just came in and it stayed it stayed and it stayed and uh and and the holy ghost started to speak about the glory and about uh about this latter rain and about the former and the latter rain together and um and then and in this book about the blood and the glory i just happened to open it up and she's talking about the latter rain and the and the levels of the glory and it was so interesting I think there's another bug coming in. We'll have to take it out too. Anyway, um, this is, it's so interesting because it went along. I haven't opened this book in a, in a while, but it went along with some of the things <coughs> that Sister Billy was talking about because we ge began to prophesy over this latter rain and how this latter rain is going to be a cumulative glory. It's going to be 
like it was before, but in the middle rain, and then this latter rain is going to combine it all, and it's going to be so glorious that we're not going to be able to stand on our own. We won't be able to stand on the name of the ministry. We won't be able to stand. It will be everything will be flowing in the river, in the river of the glory. And so that's what we're going to talk about because it's talking about this new temple arrangement and we are going to build a new building amen and i'm not trying to i'm not telling you about it to get an offering i'm telling you about it because we're excited to do something that's an offering we have got to do just david he built got all the money together and the lord told him he couldn't build it but he still got everything together amen and we want we're looking at partnering and what can we do to bless the lord amen i'm not trying to get get away with from things, but I want to bless the Lord with what I, all that I have, everything that I have. And so here in um, in Ezekiel 47, we're going to kind of go through some of, of the, these words. And it says, afterwards, he brought me again unto the door of the house and behold, the waters issued from under the threshold. And again, this Ezekiel 47 ties in with Revelation 22 and Zechariah 14, 8. So, so there's... Um, New Testament scriptures that parallel with this new glory, this new level. And I believe in the last days that this glory is going, we will be changed. I've been saying this in a, you know, a day in God's, um, in God's role, you know, a day is a thousand years. So when uh, the Bible says that uh, in an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, we think that it's going to be a suddenly and we're going to go. But I have believed for the last several years from uh, uh, through revelation, I believe from the Lord, that there will be a change that's going to come on his glorious church. And there is going to be an empowerment uh, upon the believers like we've never seen a clothing of this glory. And it's on some now, but I mean, to us, to such a level that we have never seen. It's going to be coming from heaven. Amen. And it is upon us. And it comes issuing out of our relationship. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's going to be, you know, and except to Jesus, it's not going to be for you. Okay. Sorry. It's just not. The glory is going to be poured out upon his church. And, and the church is right now getting herself prepared for it. And this is these offerings, the sacrifice of a life of not doing whatever you want, even though a, a course of grace is going to abound. Of course, there's grace, but not everything is profitable. So, so we don't take advantage, like I was sharing when the Lord put us in that penthouse, uh, that seven, several million dollar penthouse to pray. And they get, uh, you know, they had wine. It was turnkey. Everything was beautiful. There were things that I could could do and things I couldn't do. I couldn't go open the liquor cabinet, even though they said we could have whatever we wanted. I didn't go in there, open up the, the liquors and start drinking and, and guzzling down the wine. And, and, um, I didn't do certain things because the Holy Spirit constrained me. He was leading me in how my conduct should be at that place that he even set us. I didn't, and I wasn't allowed. I, I, we were renting the place. He allowed us and we got certainly got us in there supernaturally and 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 we were doing a work for them but but I, I in that in that place that God set us there, he was continuing to refine me as to what I could do while I was there my first first Facebook live was on the bar that I had anointed with oil and poured on it that that, that they had that they had built that they used for their wine and their building and it was after the the uh, um, Ritz Carlton in London, which is a famous bar, they modeled it after. It's beautifully stained glass. Well, I what I did is I poured oil on it in Jesus' name, and I made it an altar. Hallelujah, Amen. And so there's some things that He has for you to do. 
that you're to make an altar. You're to sanctify a place. Just because you have the freedom and liberty, we do not have freedom and liberty. We have to allow the Holy Spirit who constrains us and releases us to do certain things. Not everything, again, is profitable because this glory is so vital that we are flowing in the leading of the Holy Spirit because when that glory comes in, we it will all, all it's the only thing that we're going to be able to flow in. Because things are going to be so tumultuous, so many things are going to be happening that only those that are following and led by the Holy Ghost will be able to be able to stay in it. it will be able to be able to flow and to be able to not get burnt out. Hear me, burnt out. People get burned out. But when you're flowing in the Holy Spirit and when you're flowing in the Spirit, amen, there, we have, there's an old song we used to sing, swimming in the river, swimming, we still sing it, swimming in the river of the Lord, amen, I'm swimming in the river, I'm swimming in the river because he talks about the latter day house, this house. Now, it also talks in, in Revelation here in 22 about the new Jerusalem and, and, and what that's going to look like. But there is a healing that we are believing for that I've been believing for, for the nations, for the nations to be restored. Amen. And I know that you want to be a part of giving the healing for the nations. It's the name of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. Uh, this book about the blood and the glory, it, it's important that you trust the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus, that this is one of your great weapons that you're going to use in the last days. I can't tell you how many times I cover conversations with the blood of Jesus these days. I speak, I cover many conversations. Let's we cover this with the blood of Jesus. Amen. You cover it, you seal it, you protect yourself. It is a defense. Amen. And so the blood never loses its power. And if you have never studied the blood and don't understand the blood, I tell you when I was in out, out in Colorado during December, I had been meditating and studying the blood of God, the blood of the blood of Jesus, because through the years he'll always probably once he I have so many scriptures on the blood. I have many scriptures that I've studied on the blood, but he had me again that at that point before we went out to Colorado to go skiing that week um, was to study the blood. So I started li listening to. Um, I never listened to this man on the blood. Um, he was from, oh gosh, he'll come back to me, his name, but and you would know him, uh, Prince. His name was um, Derek Prince. And so I never really listened to Derek Prince before, but I was I just looked on the internet on the blood. So I started listening to him teaching on the blood. And so I was, it just was adding and just and stirring me up in the scriptures, a lot of the scriptures I've already, had already used, but it, hearing somebody preaching on it was great. And so uh, when I got up there and I got attacked in my, uh, uh, d uh, you know, uh, d demon possessed uh, 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 snowboarder tried to take me out. Um, but the blood, I started calling on the blood and through the night I was continually stirred and was speaking and was speaking about the blood. And so it, when I opened this book again today, and I know that I use the blood of Jesus, I cover the house with the blood. I cover our property with the blood. We cover the United States. We cover Florida with the blood. We do this as the Holy Spirit leads, amen. But I want you to know that it is because I believe the blood. It's not something I just catch a catchphrase. It's because I know just like Rahab that I am to, with my tongue, confess that blood to keep my house safe. Amen. That red cord of confession is what brings the protection, hallelujah, though. Oh, what? That was really good, Holy Ghost. That red cord of confession is what brought forth the protection. Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Anyway, so it is out of your mouth, the blood of Jesus, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. But see, I really do believe that it is able to save us and keep us to the uttermost, this blood confession of the blood of Jesus. Now, Jesus went to hell for three days because all of the blood would shed, right? He went to hell. 
he got, kept, got the keys and then he went to heaven and presented his blood, right? He came, said, don't touch me, Mary. I got to get the blood. I have to present the blood. He had to present. So all, how, how those angels collected the blood, I don't know. But they collected the blood and it is now ever living in heaven. Uh-huh. That blood is ever flowing for you and I because humanity was always going to need the blood to cleanse and to redeem us. Amen. Amen. And so don't be shy on pleading the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. In Jesus name, the blood of Jesus, because I believe on the sacrifice and what Jesus did for me. Amen. So this glory of this last, we will know. And she talks in this book is great. She talks about some real outpourings of the Holy Spirit that went along with discussion on the blood. And so, um, I, it's, it's again, it's something that needs to be brought. I remember when God sent us last year to, uh, Spring Hill to minister, he gave me three different things to speak on. The name of Jesus was one and the blood of Jesus was another. And I can't off the top of my head, tell you what the third, but there were like three things that I was to minister to the people in Spring Hill because they've got to understand that this is going to keep them. This is going to protect them because this is real. It's alive. It's ever living to bring healing, to bring deliverance to me and to you. So get comfortable calling on it. Start bringing. These are all weapons of our warfare, but I'm going to give you this ones that I use continually a lot all the time amen and so how does that blood contain this outpouring of this glory for this hour is going to be tremendous and there is going to our to the title of our come away this year is uh, lily among thorns and i want you to know that his glory is covering you no matter what, this glory is your defense. This glory that comes from above is covering and is a actual defense. And how do you get it? You accept and you flow in the Holy Spirit and you look to heaven and place a demand on God to fill you and to keep you inaccessible in, in, in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. You can, this glory comes upon me so many different ways. One of the ways it comes on me is when I start to worship. And so the other day when we were worshiping yesterday in prayer, when the, uh, we started to just worship and the glory just came down, it just flood. It was like a blanket. That's what the Holy Spirit feels like. It's like a blanket, a light blanket is, is how you know the presence of God has come in the room. If you're not familiar with what that feels like, you probably sensed it, but you didn't know that's the Holy Spirit. That's the comforter. Amen. So when the comforter comes, he comforts the peace of God. Well, all of a sudden, all these things, but then, then you call on Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes because he's the he is the power of God manifest in the earth now. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. But when we call on Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and he less he rests there. And so as we were worshiping Jesus, see Holy Spirit never brings acknowledgement. He doesn't care about you honoring him. He gives see it's all in everybody's in order in the Trinity. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives honor to Jesus. Jesus gives honor to the Father. Father. Amen. They're never trying to, to pull rank or pull against each other. They all give honor to each other. They're not, they're all in unity. And that is how we're going to look this glorious church. We are going to flow together. We're going to give honor to that person's anointing. And we're going to give honor to that person because we recognize that as we flow all together, I tell you, the glory comes down in greater measure. Amen. And so it's, it's not taking Taking from us when somebody starts a new work, it is it, the it, the anointing is going to increase. How is it? I was with a group of uh, ladies that I haven't been with together in many years at a at a um, meeting a couple weeks ago. And I tell you, the power of God showed up in that meeting. There was a wonderful speaker and she was, she was awesome. But I knew it was because of the unity that the three of us have had for 20 Five, almost 30 years. 
okay? That they, we've known each other that long and we have confidence in each other. And when we come together in, to pray, God shows up. Amen. And it should be that way with people that you uh, pray with. If there's a schism, if there's some reason that they don't want you, you don't need to be with a bunch of people. You just need to be with what those that are in agreement and are, are trusting the flow of the Holy Ghost through you. Amen. Because it's, he, he says we're two. He made it so easy. Where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. And so as we were praying uh, yesterday and that glory, uh, it, it, as we continued to minister, the glory then uh, uh, came down. And then we started to minister out of what uh, um, eye has not seen nor entered into the hearts of man. What God has prepared for them that serve him from uh, Second Corinthians chapter two was, I believe, what we were, where, where we were. And we were just ministering uh, and, and the Holy Ghost. I couldn't write. I couldn't write because of the glory. I, 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 I like to try to take notes of scriptures that we follow, but I couldn't take notes because of the glory. Hallelujah. And it is it, it is going to be like that more and more but it is okay because when the holy ghost comes in and floods you and floods that place hallelujah he goes where the knife of man can't go and where your mind doesn't want to go to bring about a healing and to bring about a miracle and to do things that only god can do and so this last day move how are we going to help you know my prayer is lord there's so many addicts there's so many caught in addiction. Lord, how, how can I help? How can we minister the glory, the glory, the manifest? It will be because there are things I just don't want to know about you. I would rather not know about that situation. And you know what? Every time you start to bring that past that has already been covered with the blood and already been forgiven, you know what? You make life of it again. You bring it into the present. Leave it in the past if you've asked forgiveness for it and it's been covered by the blood and you've been made a new creation. Do you really need to dig it back up again? I mean, I don't believe in that bringing up those old emotions and you've got to live all that. I don't believe that because there's always familiar spirits in a, in a, in a weak area of your life that got involved when the devil had opportunity to get into your life. And those demon spirits are familiar because they were there when you committed that sin. And, and they want to, they want to speak and they want to manifest and they want to get you to be drawn away into that past instead of who you are today in Christ Jesus and your authority today and that you are more than a conqueror in every situation. See, you're not the same person then. You've been redeemed from the curse. Amen. And he has set you in heaven places today you are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places amen and he wants you our part is to bind and loose and that's one of the things that we did when we are in that glory state we started to call things from heaven. We started to call, in, call things from the heavenly realm into this realm in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I believe that we are going to see uh, in the next, next little bit of time, we are going to see new revelation being deposited in proven men of the word. I'm not talking about men that say the word that don't live by the word. I'm talking about people that eat, like we talked about, that holy men of God, not just saved men, not just Christian men, but holy set apart men that have, have, have held to the holy things that have been meditating on the word of God and have not been adulterating the word of God for filthy lucre to build their ministry, to build whatever, because I just want you to know that the the end does not justify the means. That is a lie from the pit of hell. If you have, if you're extracting and and taking advantage of widows and orphans and and constraining them to give up everything for the gospel's sake and, and pulling on them in that way, I get it. They've got to make an offering, but for you to continue to constrain and to, to feed yourself on on people that have slain to keep that are single parents and trying to just make as meat. Oh, I tell you, God is going to take you. Uh, God is not pleased with that. I'm talking about the holy men and women of God. And some of them, you don't even know their name, but God knows their name. Well, he's going to deposit into them because this is what
what we pray. I tell you, revelation is going to come that's going to set people free. And it's going to be just like seed time and harvest was brought forth and brought in a certain dispensation. There are new things that are coming. Hallelujah. And there are new anointings and new, new ministries that are coming forth for this hour. You are not late. You've been proven. You've been gone. But, but this hour is the time that it matters. This is, you know, I talked about this yesterday. It's like Uber. Huh, cab, yellow, yeah, take a yellow cab in New York. But now, Uber changed cabs. Totally changed cabs. God is going to do some supernatural suddenlies in ministries. And it's not, it, it, I tell you, you're going to know them by their fruit. They are going to have the glory. There's going to be an out. There's going to be, it's not going to be um, smoke and mirrors. It's not going to be uh, uh, just because they have a great voice. It's going to be the, the word behind the word coming out of them. You're going to hear the anointing upon them. And then there are ministries that have, have been taken, have been taking and slandering and, 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 and stealing and doing these things. And they are not going to be here anymore. There's going to be, a, there is a shift. Because everything that can be shaken will be shaken so that those things that are in him can, will remain. Amen. And all these works that have been done in the flesh and built this up and built this, I tell you, you're going to see, because when the money fails, we're going to see who's those people that know how to buy with the currency of faith. And so you've got to understand that you've got to buy with your words, that you have to buy and make exchanges with God through your offerings, offerings of your life, offerings of traditions that you like that he doesn't want you to have anymore, offerings of ideas and things that you grew up, I don't like that we ne we never do that and guess what everybody does it now uh, uh, but uh, but god says i don't i want you to look past i want you to see that soul i want you to see what's contained i want you to see that, that i am after what is inside of that person and not their outward look not not the outward what you hear out of their voice not what they what, what clothes they wear what part they live where they live in what accent they have but i want you to see that there's a soul that's dead and speak to that dry bone to come alive and send the spirit of the Lord upon them to resurrect and, and to come in them and raise them up to be an mighty army. And you know, when these people are resurrected, when these people, this, this mighty harvest comes in, because that's what we're talking about. There's a wave of the mighty harvest coming into the earth and we have to be ready to take it. Hallelujah. But we will not be able to contain it. We won't be able to disciple them fast enough. You're going to have to teach them that they're going to have to rely on the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you're going to have to, that they're going to have to offer themselves as a living sacrifice and trust the voice of God and trust the anointing and trust the unction and trust the that it is truth. Trust in the dreams and visions. Test the spirits to see if they are of God. You are to told to test the spirits. You test something comes at you. You have a little bit of check that doesn't. Well, mm. You fill it here. You test. Can you say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Can you say Jesus Christ is, is Lord of Lords? That's you test. This is what we we know. But see, people stop testing. They said they didn't or they didn't get it. They didn't know. This, this is not about. We're not talking about people who are ignorant. There's a group of people that are ignorant of these things. Then there's the people that know and have chosen not to do. And and and, and as we Pastor Kevin talked about Haggai the other night, it says, you know, you will know those of you that knew and did not do he says i'm going to reject you and you will know you rejected my word and you will no more be a priest to me anymore and so there are people doesn't mean that they won't serve god but they will not be in the position so i don't care how many times you think that people can go this way and keep doing this and that they don't pay a consequence i'm telling you in the book of this book there is going to be they will still be saved, not talking about salvation at all. I'm talking about the anointing, the empowerment of the, of God on them. Like it was early times. I, I just, there's, there's a giving up when you've tainted, you know, it says that in, in the book of Jude, you won't be able, some you'll be able to bring out of the fire, hanging even the garments that were soiled by what they've done. But you know, you're bringing them out. That doesn't mean they're re restored to the full ministry that they had. And you can, 
can see that in certain people that you've watched that have fallen away and have done things in, in, in levels. And I pray, I, I, listen, I'm not judging. I'm saying I judge myself as I, Lord, I don't want to fall away. I want to stay, if I have to stay close to the ground and nobody sees me, that's okay, Lord, because I want to stay close to you because nothing satisf satisfies except Jesus. You know that. We know that, right? You know that. I know that. There is not anything because you can have diamonds and houses and lands and you have known to have Jesus. Jesus, and you are empty, but we are calling God to, we're speaking to God to resurrect, to raise up the dry bones in this land, and Lord, raise up dry bones, and send the Spirit of God upon them, and fill these, these dry bones, and let them live, and let them serve you, and let them become a mighty army, and then when these dry bones come alive, and they get filled, we have to make room we have to make room in our hearts to use the most unusual people, just like Rahab. What a picture that Rahab was used as harlot. This person, this woman of ill repute was used to, to, to bring people to Jesus, to bring not people to Jesus, but, but, but to save her family, to call up and put that red cord in her house, Lord. It is the blood. It is the name. But we are to be walking if we are holy. He is holy, and he says he desires that we would be holy like him. And so in, in, this, story, in this chapter of, of 47, it says, He brought me to the door of the house, and first the waters were just issuing out from under the threshold of the house. And then again, the man that had the line in his hand, verse 3, measured the water. Now it was ankle deep. And again, he measured it, and it was knee deep. Okay, and then after it, it became a river that you could not pass over. This glory will not be able to be contained. You just are going to have to flow. You're going to have to swim in it. You're going to have to stay in it. You're not going to be profitable outside of this glory. Hallelujah. And it is a, and this is glory is on his church and how we are getting ready. It's bringing the offerings, a being a burnt offering, hallelujah, allowing the fire to burn out the chaff. I'm examining my heart attitudes. It, oh, I tell you, it, I, I, I don't know, it just seems certain times today, I just, the Lord said, we're going to fast again. So, I mean, I woke up this morning thinking, well, you know, this is another, no, but you know, it's another fast day. And so again, those are being, being obedient. God knows what is coming forth. And so if he's prompting you to fast, fast, it doesn't have to be my fast. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be fruits of, it can, but, but set yourself aside to hear. This is a serious time in history. It's a beautiful time. It, it's going to be woe to the wicked, but say to the, the righteous fear, you know. God. Amen. Because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, um, that again, he measured verse four and it was knee deep. Again, then after it, verse five, it became a river that you couldn't pass over, that we can't stop. We just got to get in and swim in it. Amen. And then there were many, there were many trees on, on the side and on the other. And these trees, hallelujah, uh, these waters that pass by these trees will be healed. Amen. And everything that moved in this river will be healed. So you, so your freedom and your healing and your miracles are flowing in the Holy Spirit and in Him in this hour. Amen. And in you, they shall be healed, healed and everything shall live as you stay in this glory. Amen. It is again your defense. It says fishers will catch their net and catch fish. In this glorious time, we will catch many fish. Amen. And the trees that are along the side of the river, these leaves will be for the healing of the nations. And I've been praying and a, a, a friend of mine went to find the picture she painted. People paint, paint pictures for me. It was so wonderful. She gave me a picture and gave me this old 
15 years ago, that I was going to be used for the healing of the nations. And I am so grateful because it is Jesus alone that is going, is our healer, our health and our salvation. And only through faith in his name can we be made whole and our family be made whole and the nations be healed. The trees that are along the side of the river, these leaves, verse 12, are for the healing of the nations. Amen. And then it talks about the borders of the land. Well, I'm just going to finish here, though, with uh, Revelation, because this is also uh, in Revelation. Now, this church, this uh, temple that Ezekiel spoke about is um, never, was never built. It's it's supposed to be the millennial temple, okay? And, and so this temple is being built, though, in heaven. It's as being established because these words are eternal. And so even though you might not see them come exactly as they were written and put together in the book of Ezekiel, they will come to pass and they are still alive and they are still coming to pass. Amen. Because uh, just like Isaiah 45, he's given me the treasures of darkness and hidden riches and secret places was for me when he gave it to me almost 30 years ago. It's still today. I was praying. I'm thanking you, Lord, that you are giving me the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Amen. So that word was true then and word was true there and it is still coming to pass. There are more treasures as I open up my heart to receive, I, as, as if I'm cluttered down with all this natural stuff, I'm not going to be able to receive what God wants to give me for this hour. So that's why it's vital for us to get our hearts cleaned up, continue to let God cleanse us. I, uh, the Lord gave me this morning a, a ministry name. It was so cool. Uh, staying clean. It was by the whole, I was praying with someone, I was like, staying clean. Because we've got to stay clean. We've got to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, the, men, the Jesus to come in and repent of our sins and be renewed in the spirit of our mind and continue to allow the Holy Spirit to make us new. I have to be made new. This old wineskin that I had yesterday isn't going to make it in this hour. And this no, new that old wine, even though I thought it was the new wine, it was new then, but he needs new. we need to have new new wine today. Amen. And so wherever you are in your relationship with Lord, how many times you've seen glory, it's not going to be compared to what is coming. It's not dried up. It's not ending. It is getting, it is on a greater level of increase. Amen. All you have to do is read the word and say, Lord, I may not understand this, but I receive it. I'm taking it, Lord. I, I don't know what part I'm in it. If I'm the trees, if I'm the leaves, if I'm, if I'm at where I am, if I'm at wherever I am, I'm going to be with you in this river, Lord. And so in uh, uh, Re Revelation 22, hallelujah, it's talking about the new heaven and the new earth. And of course, that hasn't come because that's going to come in the millennial and in the millennial rule. But I believe there's smatterings like the suddenlies that's going to, it's going to be quickening of the church before we get rapture, before we meet him, and there's going to be miracle signs and wonders like we've never seen, because only th those things that are quickened will remain, and those things that are quickened by the Holy Spirit are going to be are going to be able to persevere in the season. And so this quickening of the Holy Spirit is a preservative and it will keep us. And it is how you're going to be able to function in this hour through the Holy Spirit. So in, in Revelation chapter 22, he said, and then he showed me a pure, uh, let me go back and up to uh, uh, 27. Um, let me go back to 20, uh, 21, 22, because we were talking about this a couple chapters uh, a good day or two ago. And it says, and I saw no temple there. The new Jerusalem, there will be no temple because the Lord God Almighty, he is the temple. You run into God. You understand that he is 
our source. He is, we run into him and we're safe. And the lamb, they are the temple of the new heavenly Jerusalem, the new heavenly. They are the temple. Amen. And we are going, it is established. It is already in existence. We just haven't gotten there, but it is coming in. <laughs> There's just a sliver. It's just a fine little line between us and eternity it's just it's just good and you like yesterday in prayer you just you stepped over into the glory realm where you are ministering and worshiping amen where you are saying heavenly things and getting heavenly revelation that god wants us to uh have and so i had Praise God, I was able to go back and talk to the woman that I was praying most of the time with yesterday in that prayer time because I had, I didn't, I, you know, I was up in the glory realm that so much that I couldn't even really remember all that was being said. But again, it was, it was all, most of it was based on 2 Corinthians chapter, um, I think it's 2 Corinthians. Let me make sure. It's either 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, where he's talking about, um, thank you, Lord, everything um, I has not seen nor entered into the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that seek him. Amen. Uh, it's it's first Corinthians chapter two. So so this was um, I kind of forgotten. This was what I was ministering and speaking by the Holy Ghost when we were in that realm of glory yesterday in that prayer meeting. And, 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 hallelujah. Again, I've had lots of prayer meetings. Everyone is different. Every prayer saturation is different. But this one yesterday, because we were talking about the glory and I am ministering on Ezekiel right now and getting ready to minister on him talking about the glory in the temple. This new temple is not this new dispensation, this thing that we have crossed over is not going to be, it, it is going to be the it, compilation, the, uh, all, everything, the cumulative of the glory from before, uh, then the former and the latter reign together. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about the re weather, right? The Holy Ghost reign, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost R E I G N, not R A I N. He's raining down, but there's a R E I G N. Uh, I misspelled it last time. The reign of the Holy Ghost that's going to be happening, and so we got to be in it. We've got to be yielding to it. We've got to be. We've got to be sensitive to the promptings. Resist the devil. Use the blood of Jesus, which I was talking about a few minutes ago. Let me just go on and read this passage here. So, uh, verse twenty, uh, Revelation. 21 verse 22 and I saw isn't it it's 2022 20, right and it's chapter revelation 22 for 2022 glory glory thank you lord praise the lord hallelujah and I saw no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb are the temple in it I'm speaking from revelation 21 Verse 22, 23. And the city had no need of sun, neither of moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Oh, great, Makata. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and the uh, glory and honor into it and the gates will not be shut all day for there shall be no ever be any night any more and there shall in no wise enter into this this new jerusalem anything that's been defiled neither whatsoever works abominations or makes a lie but only they which are written in the lamb's book of life and that's you and i because we've accepted jesus so we're in the lamb's book of life and then he says he shows me a pure river of water of life a pure river of water of life a water of life this word is the water amen the water of life it's clear and crystal and it proceeds from the throne of god and of the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river there was there the tree of life which bore 12 manners of fruit fruits and yielded her fruit every month amen and and yielded her fruit every month and these leaves 
war of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. The tree, the fruit is coming 12 months out of the year. And it's not just for this nation, but it is for the many nations. Amen. And it says, and there will be no more curse, but the throne of God, and the lamb will be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. They are constantly in the morning give me Jesus in the morning you know it will be in their forehead he will go and you know it says it early in Revelation they went and marked in, in Ezekiel they went and marked the people and put markings on the people that were crying out and, and serving the Lord so there is a mark that God makes it that the, for those that are his and there shall no be no more night there, and they need no candle, nor light or sun. For the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever. These sayings are faithful and true, and ah, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel sh to show unto his servants the things which must come, must come shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And understand, we keep them. We may not fully understand them, but we say, Lord, come now, Jesus, take your church away. And then I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and, and saw these, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. See, an angel was helping to show, give revelation. And then said, he said, angel said, see thou that you do not this, for I am a fellow servant of your brethren and the prophets. And all of them which keep the sayings of this book, don't worship men, don't worship a prophet, don't worship an angel, don't worry, you worship God. There is only one number with God, and it's number one. You honor people, but you don't bow to them. I'm, I'm really careful the Lord corrected me about laying down, prostrate in front of people, uh, uh, men and women of God, because it, it, it's it, we do it in the Lord. We lay a pros in, un, unto God, and you don't take, we don't take, even when they fall in the spirit, spirit it is unto the lord it is not unto me it is i am not i am i am a servant i am a fellow servant but worship god hallelujah that's why he wants some people that will allow him to touch his people to provide an atmosphere for his glory to be present for his word to come forth and the glory to be present so that people get delivered because we're not going to be able to counsel them about addiction only the power of the almighty god is going to able be able to save them to the uttermost and bring the salvation and and the oremesekema to to these people that are in these addictions and in so many things. It's just, it's so rampant. So again, like the Lord said, um, the, the, he gave me the name as I was praying with someone today, uh, staying clean. Amen. We all have to stay clean. I have a choice today just to remain free, to remain clean in Jesus, clean in my heart. He says, you know, give me a, I want the Lord to give me a pure heart. That he won't despise. And that's an old song. You know, give me a right heart that's free from compromise. Give me a pure heart that keeps me close to you. There are people that he's got so close to himself that you can't, won't be able to tell the difference between them and Jesus. Amen. And we want to be that close that when we say whatever Jesus says or the Father says, those things come to pass, but it requires who will ascend to the hill of the Lord. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted their soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Amen. This is the hill of the Lord. Amen. This is, this is where he wants you to stay inaccessible. Bring in those free will offerings as we talked about a few minutes ago. What are the offerings? This is not required by law. These are, a, we are a burnt offering that we give our lives to the Lord. I encourage you 
And to go back, if you just gone on, go back to these two chapters. It's powerful. If you don't have, or if you've heard of this book, it's an old book called the, not that old, but called The Blood and the Glory by, um, by Billy Bram. She's on, you can get her on. She's got her, a big prayer, prayer ministry. Um, I, I've never been there, never felt to. I have God gives me my own prayer people. Isn't that wonderful to know you? But there's certain things that he'll say, I want you to get this from this person. I want you to go over here. And when I open this book today, when the Lord prompted me to go to it, he, it, it opened to um, the great outpourings at the back of the book. He talks about situations that happened um, when they started to start ministering on the blood of Jesus. When they started to get back to uh, using the blood. as a, And it is one of the weapons of our warfare that Pastor Kevin has been going through um, um, in the services. Not necessarily Sunday, but, but we've been going through the weapons of our warfare. And, and it's also on our give me a year school that we have um, on give me a year dot net we have all, all all of the weapons of our warfare are also um, on that for you to go back and listen to and so the this glory hallelujah it's now it's clothing you it is protection. It is a wall of defense for you. You want to yield to it. You want to trust it. And I remember when people would come and talk to me years ago before I uh, really, even I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I, I didn't really um, get what they were saying. I, I just wasn't in tuned to the Holy Spirit as I have been tuned now as through the years I've gotten more tuned I pray I continue to be more tuned in amen but so so they would say I sense the anointing and I'd say I don't, I don't know I'd look at them like well what do you mean by that you know what do they mean no, I sense the, you know or and I remember brother Rodney being here at the house many years ago and and they were talking to me about the anointing and about the transfer of the anointing and and um, I'm like well Okay, but, but the Lord demonstrated it for me with my daughter. Uh, my daughter was just born, Katie, and we were in a service, um, in a worship service, and I had been in the back with the children because I had to get them all settled because there were three other already that were in child care, and so I had to get them all settled. And so I, I got them all settled in, and, and, and Pastor Kevin had Katie in his arms. It was before we actually were called to, to the ministry. So he was in, in worship, in the worship seat setting uh, with Katie in his arms as an infant. When I came into that worship, I'd come in from, you know, the, the, the children's church, uh, the ministry, and I came in and I stood next to P Pastor Kevin, and, Ke and Pastor Kevin handed me Katie. Well, when he handed me Katie, the glory of God was all on her. Just a baby. She was receiving. She didn't know. She was just receiving the glory. It was all, uh, when he handed, it was like he handed me this little beautiful glory. It was just, it, this, the glory of God was all I could say was on her. And the warmth of the Holy Spirit, just as I took her, I just came right on me. Amen. Because they were both in worship and they were both magnifying God. And a lot of times the glory will come upon me in services as I worship. Just like as we were ministering before the Lord, the glory cloud showed up. Amen. And so don't be stuck in how it happens. For one, it may happen in your life a little differently than somebody else. But that glory again is a defense and he has clothed you and he was clothing the church in this hour with his glory. Amen. For those that are in tune and yielding to the spirit, he is going to clothe you so that no matter what thorns are coming at you, no matter what is being poking and prodding you, this glory will be a preservative 
over you. You will not feel the stings. You will not set you. You know, it's, they said that they could not kill back in the old modern days, martyrdom days, that they could not kill. They would try to kill these martyrs, you know, try to martyr people and they wouldn't die. They had to find ways to kill them because they tried to kill them and they couldn't kill them. And that is going to be the, uh, the former and the latter days together is what we're going to see in these last days. Not just what happened there. That was for that time. But we're going to have the cumulative glory coming in this hour. And don't you want to be all in? I want to be swimming. I don't want to be except uh, there's going to be a point we won't be able to minister at the altar. We'll be on our faces. So if you're if you get upset about having your makeup up messed up and how good your hair looks or whether your dress is, is, is you know that's why you want to be wearing some clothes that it does it's not going to matter if they go up over your head you know or you know something that you can be comfortable to receive because you don't want to be so stiff that you can't receive when the presence of God shows up sometimes your yieldedness as a leader and minister I've got pastors on your yieldedness to the Holy Spirit opens up the door for for it to fall on everybody else. But if you won't be a container and you won't let the glory have its way on you, then it won't be able to go into the rest of the people. And so sometimes the leadership themselves are the ones that are prohibiting the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a service or a ministry because they won't allow them to touch them. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch me. He wants to touch his people. And we don't want to hold Hold back. We don't want to keep back this glory from filling our lives in every area and letting it change us, rearrange us, fire us up, send us out or make us sit down and be quiet, whatever he wants to do. Oh, Lord, we say, King of glory, come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord. Strong and mighty. This is the King of glory. We need to say, Lord, come in. Change us. Rearrange us. So that we, that we are a living sacrifice. A burnt offering. That smit fragrance is a sweet smell in your nostrils, Lord. I thank you for everyone that watches today, that's watching later today. Father, that will watch these, Lord, I pray for outpouring, for the glory, the pinch of presence. Thank you, Lord, for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for you are so faithful to redo us, renew us, to rearrange us, Father, and to resurrect us. And Father, we thank you today. I declare by the words of my mouth that I will never be the same. I don't want to go back, Lord, to the old wine skin and the old wine, Lord, when I have tasted and seen that you are good and you are merciful. I've tasted and seen that you are good. And I ask you that you tasted and seen how good he is. He has more for you than ever before. New things coming for you today. New refreshings, new cleansings. Amen. Hallelujah. Allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Allow this glory. Allow this glory to touch you, to touch your people, to do a new thing in your life. Father, don't try to contain it. Allow the Father who loves you, your Abba Father, to do a new thing in your life by his Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, Pastor Kevin, it's not about tongues. It's about his power. And in this last day, you, we need all of it. 
I need more of it. Amen. And it's been, I, I've been able to have it in a measure. But I have God, God has to do a work in my heart to receive a greater measure, a greater outflow of his glory to flow out of me. I don't want offense and things that clog that glory flow. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying, Lord, open, let me let go so that the glory can flow. Let me let go so your glory can flow through me. I pray that you I ask that you would pray that for yourself today and we'll be back with you tomorrow and, and go through the left, probably the last um, chapter here of, of the chapter of Ezekiel. It's been a fun ride and, and next month I'm sure I'll be doing another book, but I encourage you to go back and listen to some of the things that I've taught on. If you didn't watch all of this, I think it would be good for you to go back and listen to it because we talked about um, the last two, two, couple chapters of, of offerings, of free will offerings to the Lord, and then... Um, and then the feast of free will offerings, and then how about the flow of the last day glory? Amen. Thank you for being with me. I love you guys. Love you all. Thank you. So good to have you pastors on today. Hallelujah. Glory to see you with us, with me today. And I, I pray that this is ministered to you. I pray that it quickens your, this, your spirit, that you really are, are not the same, that you're going to say, Lord, I, I just have to go forward in you. And though none go with me, yet I will follow you into this glory. I don't may not understand these words. I may not understand, but I trust that these words are true. And I hold to the prophecies that are in this book. And I thank you for being with me today. God bless you. And I look forward to being back with you tomorrow. God bless.